Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're going to be making a pot roast. Now you can use any roast to make this recipe that you want and I'm actually making two roasts in this video and I have this one which is a top round roast and I've already started a London broil which is also a cut of round roast and they were the cheapest two cuts of meat that I could get or two roasts that I could get in the grocery store. They were both on sale for $4 a pound, which was like $2 and a half cheaper than what they normally are. Now, when you're paying that much for meat, you definitely don't want to mess it up. And a lot of people have trouble with pot roast coming out dry or tough, especially when you get a cheaper roast, like a round roast or the London broil, you have to cook it right or it just doesn't come out good. So today I'm going to give you the tips that you need for cooking it so it comes out tasty, juicy, and tender. Basically everything I have here except for maybe a little salt and pepper is optional. I'm going to tell you how to cook a roast with vegetables in it like carrots and potatoes or how to cook a roast with just the gravy on it and you can make sides with it like mashed potatoes and green beans or maybe some steamed asparagus or whatever you want with it. So you don't have to cook it with the carrots and potatoes in it like the Sunday dinner pot roast that your grandma made. You can make it and have the sides separate and Brett actually likes it a roast with mashed potatoes and stuff on the side better than he does the vegetables cooked in it. So anyway, let's get started. And like I said, a lot of this is technique. It's not so much what kind of meat you get. If you can get one of those nice roasts, you know, with a big thick layer of fat on the bottom of it, that's going to be, that will have the best flavor and it will have the best texture. But if you cook these right, you can get the same texture and the same flavor. So let's get our pan turned on. Now, you do want a lid on whatever kind of pan you're using. And if I was cooking this for a big crowd, I would use a Dutch oven, you know, a big round pot that's deep with a lid on it. And the I've cooked two of these on Christmas before. I always do pot roast on Christmas because it's kind of easy. It's in one pot and you're not running to get everything ready. It's something you can cook the roast and then just throw the vegetables in right before you're ready to eat. That's why I like it on Christmas. I don't have to spend all day in the kitchen cooking. But, um, and I do do the vegetables in it on Christmas. And I've cooked this for crowds of like 25 people before. Usually have to have at least two pots for 25 people. But um, you want about half a pound per person. So this is a two and a half pound roast. Brett and I would have this for dinner a couple of times. Or you could feed four to six people with this roast. You do want to get your pan hot. And because my roast doesn't have very much fat on it, I'm going to add just a little bit of fat into my pan. And I want to do that because I want to sear the meat. And when you sear it, you kind of brown the outside before you start cooking it. And that's going to add a lot of flavor to it as it cooks. And in your finished roast, it's going to have a better flavor. You could use anything to sear it in. You could use the butter like I did or oil or um, even just put cooking spray in the pan if you want to, especially if you're using a nonstick pan. Um, I have up a roast video that's been up for years and I'm redoing it mostly because of the color and the sound. It was pretty hard to watch and it was a roast that I was cooking for dinner and I cooked it for dinner and kind of explained how to do it as opposed to what I'm doing now, which is cooking it to explain how I'm doing it. We're going to eat it, but it's not, I'm, this is more of how to do it than it is just, here's my dinner. <laughs> One of the questions that I got recently on the other video was, 
can you cook it in a stainless steel pan? You can cook this in any pan. You do not have to have a nonstick pan or Dutch oven to cook this in. You can cook it in cast iron, you can cook it in stainless steel, you can cook it in whatever. If you're a new cook, to be perfectly honest with you, it is easier in a nonstick pan because it will be less likely to burn in a nonstick pan. But any pan will work. I, like I said, if you're new, you might want to start with nonstick because it's a little easier to keep it from burning. You are going to cook it for a long time. Now, once you're sure that your pan is pretty hot, um, you can see my butter is actually starting to brown a little bit and it's all foamy. You can go ahead and add your meat in. You do want to be careful about cross-contamination. You don't want to sit this plate that's had the roast on it or any utensils that have that raw meat on them just down on your countertop. That's a good way to make a bunch of people sick at dinner. Now for this part of cooking, you're going to have your pan turned up kind of medium to high because, like I said, you're wanting to sear the outside. And this top round roast is a little bit thicker than the London broil that I've already got started that I'm going to show you here in a minute. So I'm actually going to sear this side and maybe do a little bit of searing on this side, kind of seal in a little bit more of the outside of it than just the top and the bottom. This one does have a nice little rib of fat right through here, which will add a lot of flavor to it. So you don't need to worry about those little ribs of fat. And if you get that roast, like I was talking about with the thick layer of fat on the bottom, don't take that off before you cook it. You won't need to add your butter. Just start it with that fat down and let some of that cook off. And then you can sear the other, the other side in that fat that cooks off of the bottom of your roast. And you don't have to leave that fat on there when you serve it. Once it's cooked, that fat will literally peel right off. Um, I remember years ago, we were visiting uh, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law and she was making a roast and her mom came in the kitchen and she was trying to cut that off. And her mom was like, what in the world are you doing? And it's really hard to cut fat. I don't know if you've ever tried to trim fat or not, but fat is very, very hard to cut. And she said, well, I don't want to eat all this. And her mom said, leave it on and it'll come right off when you get done cooking it. And she had no idea how easy it was to get all that fat off when you were done cooking it. And then you have the flavor in your food but like I said, you don't have to leave that big piece of fat on there when you serve it if you don't want to. And this right here is what I'm talking about, searing it. You just want it browned a little bit. You're not trying to cook the whole roast like this because if you cook the whole roast on high, it would be very, very tough, especially with no more fat than it has in it. Okay, while that side's searing, let's talk a little bit about the other stuff that we have over here. Um, now, I want to put some gravy in this. Whether you cook it with the potatoes and the carrots in it or not, you're probably going to want some gravy with it. And all you're going to need for that is some water. And I do always use filtered water. I just think that it tastes a little bit better. Um, we have city water here, even though we're way out in the country. And sometimes it really has a taste and a smell. And I don't like that in my food. So anything that I cook that the water is going to stay in, I always use filtered water. And how much water you need is going to kind of depend on how much juice is in your roast. And I have a couple of tablespoons of cornstarch. That's going to thicken my gravy. Now for seasoning, I've got some salt and some pepper. And you can use a little garlic powder. You can use fresh garlic. But my main seasoning is going to be these green peppers and onions. And I'm going to cook those until they literally almost disintegrate in my broth. Let's check on this real quick again. Okay, yep, that side is all nice and brown. So I'm going to sear a little bit more of the outside of this. Now I have some baby carrots and some new potatoes. 
This time of year, those are pretty pricey, but we're getting ready to come into the season where you're gonna have new potatoes. If you're cooking this with potatoes and carrots in it, you can literally use any potatoes and carrots. You just wanna cut them up a little bit. I chose these because they're pretty and I'm doing a video and I use them when I make this at Christmas time because there is minimal prep work with these. You can throw them in whole or you can cut the potatoes up a little bit. I usually do cut my potatoes up because if you cook them whole, the juice and the flavor from the roast can't really get through the skin well. But if you cut them, that flavor will get in the potato. So, you know, like I said, you can use any kind though. And when I'm not making it for Christmas, you know, if I'm just making it for a Sunday dinner, I'll use just regular old russet potatoes or red skin potatoes or whatever kind of potatoes I got and just cut them up in there. I don't go to the trouble or the expense of buying these little ones and you don't have to do that either. It's just, again, minimal prep work. And I'm gonna sear that one more flat edge on my roast. I'm not gonna worry about searing this because I'd have to stand there and hold it in the pan and that's just silly and you don't have to do it that much. But that browned roast on the outside will add flavor to it when you're done and you slice it up and serve it. You can also see I've got this nice caramelized brown butter and roast juice down in my pan. Of course with the color of this pan you can't really tell it's brown but it is brown and it looks really good already. All right, once you get the outside seared, which just takes a minute, you wanna go ahead and add in your onions, your peppers. Uh, you could chop up celery and put in here, fresh garlic, just whatever you have. And there's not really any set amount. Um, this is just a medium onion, and I didn't chop it up super fine. Um, I just kinda sliced it and cut it in half after I sliced it. Okay, now I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm not gonna put all the salt and pepper that I want for this on here now, but salt and pepper are both flavor enhancers, and I want that in here to bring out the flavor in these um, onions and in the roast and in the peppers. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a lid on it, turn the heat down to low, and we're gonna cook this for about four or five hours on low heat covered. Now for the first hour or so that you cook this, you wanna check on it every 15, 20 minutes or so, just to make sure it has enough juice in it. And after 15 or 20 minutes, you can let it cook for an hour or longer at a time and just check on it about every hour to make sure it still has enough juice in it. Now, I did not add any water to this. And this is the um, London broil cut. And you can see how much juice is in here. My peppers and my onions are in here. You can also see I cooked this one in a stainless steel pot it does not have to be a non-stick pan to cook this. I did this exactly like the other one, seared both sides. And I have a really nice tender piece of meat now. I can stick these plastic tongs into it. I mean, that is a super tender piece of meat. And you can also see how my peppers and my onions have just almost disintegrated there. They have nearly cooked into nothing. So at this point, you have two options. Your roast is done. You can go ahead and add your cornstarch to your water, pour it in here, heat it to a boil, and it will, you will have a roast with gravy. And you can serve that with mashed potatoes and, or, and whatever other sides you want. If you wanna do the pot roast, the Sunday dinner pot roast with the carrots and the potatoes, add your carrots first. Thank you. 
and you just throw them in here. And you can turn it up to about medium now if you want to, or you can leave it on low and continue to cook it really slow. Um, it kind of depends on how much time you have. If it took your roast a little longer to get ready and your dinner guests are hungry, you can turn it up and get it done quick. If you've still got an hour before everybody gets here, leave it on low and cook these slow. Now, I don't even need to add any more liquid really right now because the liquid has pretty much covered my carrots and some liquid is going to come out of the carrots. But because I've turned this up a little bit, I am going to add just a little because about the only way at this point that you can mess this up is to let it dry out. And that's about the only way you can mess it up, period, is to let it dry out. You have to keep some moisture in it. And normally, I don't have to add any at all. If your lid fits on your pot pretty good, you shouldn't have to add any because the juice coming out of your onions and your peppers and, you know, if you added celery and stuff, it would have juice in it as it cooked and broke down. That liquid would come out of there. And that usually is more than enough moisture to cook it without adding anything at all. And I know a lot of folks add um, canned broth and stuff to their roasts. Well, if you cook it slow, there's no need for that because it makes its own broth. And it really should make its own broth. If you have to add canned broth to it, you're cooking it way too fast and it's gonna be tough. And then it's gonna taste like canned broth when you're done, not like a roast, really. Once you get your carrots in there, go ahead and put the lid back on and just let them cook. I usually let my carrots cook for about 15 minutes before I add my potatoes because the carrots cook much slower than the potatoes. It depends on how high I've got them turned up, but usually about 15 minutes is what it takes. Now, while those are cooking, I wanna cut up my potatoes and check them for spots. Even the little expensive ones this time of year will quite often have spots on them. And I'm not gonna cut them up too small, but I am gonna cut them up small enough to kinda eat and also small enough to let that flavor from the roast get in them. Okay, I check my carrots so that I know when to add the potatoes. And as soon as I get where I can get a fork into my carrots, even though they're not done yet, that's when I add my potatoes. Um, at that point, your carrots will be completely done by the time your potatoes get done. And like I said, you can use any carrots and any potatoes. The method is the same. You want your carrots to the point where you can get a fork in them and then you add your potatoes. And you can leave the potatoes whole if you want to. Now, here's a little tip. If you're cooking this for a great big crowd of people, you may not have a pot big enough to hold the roast and all your vegetables. When I make it at Christmas, my biggest pot will not hold all the vegetables and the roast for everybody that I have to feed. So what you can do when you get it to the point where your carrots are done, your roast is already done. It was done before you even started adding your carrots. You can pull the roast out sit it on a plate, get it ready to serve, maybe even slice it up, and then put your potatoes in, and that'll free up a whole lot of room in your pot. So you've got enough room in the pot to make all your vegetables and still make your gravy, and you don't have to cook it in two pots. It's all cooked in one pot. You just pull the roast out before you add the potatoes. And I almost always have to do that at Christmas time. Now, if you've got plenty of time, you don't need to worry about adding more liquid. But if everybody's there and you've got it turned up on kind of medium high, add a little bit more liquid so that it comes up mostly over your potatoes. Um, it doesn't have to come all the way over them because there's a lot of steam in here and the steam will cook them just as long as it's close to being, they're close to being covered. And you can also kind of lift the roast up at this point and put it on top of the vegetables. And that gets those 
potatoes all down in that um, juice in the broth from the roast and the onions and peppers and stuff and that way they will absorb all that flavor as they cook now just put your lid back on it and how long it takes is going to depend on how big you've cut your potatoes up if you left those potatoes whole you might want to throw them in there when you put the carrots in if you're using small carrots um, might you might still want to give the carrots just a minute because carrots do cook much slower than potatoes now while we're waiting on our potatoes to cook let's go over this whole process really slow and kind of put some detail into it you want to start with your pan hot put a little bit of fat in there if you don't have fat on your roast if you're using one of the cheaper cuts like i did like the top round or the london broil which is usually what I can get on sale around here. And with prices right now, that's about all I can afford. Because when you go shopping for this, you want at least a half pound pre-cooked weight per person that you're gonna be serving. And if you're making this for a big Sunday dinner for a lot of people, that's pretty expensive. That's $2 a person if it's on sale, uh, as much as $3.50 a person if it's not just for the meat. So, Start with your pan hot. Put a little fat in there. Sear the outside of your roast. Uh, once it's seared, go ahead and add in any vegetables that you're gonna use to season it with, like onions, peppers, celery, garlic, anything like that. Go ahead and put that in there at this, as soon as you sear the meat, before the roast really starts to cook. Then you're going to put a lid on it and you're going to turn it all the way down on low and you're going to let it sit and simmer for hours these um, two and a half pound roasts i cooked for about four and a half hours um, there's not really a set time that i can give you on exactly how long you want to cook it you want at least an hour per pound if you want it to be tender now i know that if you go eat roast in a fancy restaurant when they cut it it looks like it did after i seared it <laughs> that's not how we eat our roast um, and you have to be very very careful with that or you will make yourself super sick um, and it's not going to be tender and it's not going to be that sunday pot roast that your grandma made so this is not fancy restaurant roast this is granny's pot roast here this is the Sunday dinner that you had when you were a kid, a real home-cooked pot roast. So, like I said, at least an hour, maybe an uh, hour and a half per pound is not too much. And you can cook it longer than that. Uh, I've done them, you know, for big get-togethers and like a five, six pound roast, I've cooked it eight nine ten hours a long time until it literally just falls apart you can't overcook it as long as you don't let it dry out just make sure it keeps some moisture in it if it starts to dry out if maybe you know there was steam getting out around your lid and it started to dry out just add a little water to it it's not gonna dilute your flavor because the flavor is still going to be concentrated in what juice is left it's the water that's cooking off not the flavor so you can add a little water into it as it's cooking if you need to like i said i usually don't and if you cook it on low you probably won't have to either and then once it's cooked once your seasoned vegetables the onions and peppers and whatever else you decided to throw in there once that's really really done once they've almost disappeared and your roast is tender then you can either make your gravy with your cornstarch slurry which is what we're going to do here you just add water to cornstarch now you want to put the cornstarch in cold water you don't want to add the water into your roast and then add your cornstarch into your roast that's going to make a mess now I like to have at least half a cup of cold water to add my cornstarch to. And like I said, this is just two tablespoons of cornstarch. 
and all you're gonna do is add it to it and stir it up and then you're gonna put that in your roast and if you don't cook the carrots and potatoes in your roast you do that as soon as the roast gets as done as you want it and serve whatever you want on the side um, I don't add any kind of seasoning or anything to the gravy but what I do do is once my potatoes and my carrots are done then I add enough salt and pepper to it to season the carrots and potatoes and I also sit salt and pepper on the table because the roast itself is a pretty big chunk of meat and you would really have to add a lot of salt to it when you cooked it to get that salt flavor all the way through the meat. It would have, the whole dish would have a really high sodium um, content to it and everybody's not gonna like it that way. So if you add salt and pepper on the table so that everybody can salt and pepper their roast themselves, uh, everybody likes it better and you end up with less a less concentrated sodium content. Uh, whereas like processed foods, they all have really high concentrations of sodium in them. Part of that is because they have to get it all the way into the center. I don't know why they can't just say salt and pepper it on the table, but they don't. They add enough sodium into it that it's all the way into the center of that meat and it's been cooked and processed and frozen or canned or whatever. And so through all of that cooking and processing that the flavor from the salt has been, um, it, it cooks away. You lose the flavor the more processed it is or the more cooked it is. So if you wait until the end and add it and if you put it on the table, it's a lot healthier than if you put it in when you start and it has more flavor. Our potatoes are getting close to done. It won't be too much longer now. Like I said, there's no set time I can give you. It just depends on how big they're cut and also what variety of potatoes you're using in it. If you use a russet potato, they're gonna cook faster than if you use something firmer like a Yukon Gold or a red skin potato. So you might wanna keep that in mind when you're planning your meal. If you have a firm potato, you're gonna have to allow longer for it to cook. And Sunday dinner though, the classic Sunday dinner, when everybody thinks about Sunday dinner, a slow cooked pot roast is what comes to mind. And like I said, I've had a lot of questions about what kind of pot you have to use. And you can cook this in any kind of pot. And a, um, a thicker bottom on your pots, if you're shopping for pots and pans, the thicker the bottom, the better. And it doesn't matter what the finish on the inside is, if you wanna get plain stainless steel, if you wanna get something porcelain lined, if you're getting cast iron, you know, whatever you're getting, a thicker pot, especially on the bottom, cooks better because it distributes the heat better and it keeps your food from burning. And I've had that question over and over and over, you know, what's the best kind of pot to buy or pan to buy? I have a dozen different brands of pots and pans and they have almost all been gifts. I haven't chosen any of them. Um, other people have gotten them for me and the ones with the thicker bottoms are the best. And I'm not partial to any particular brand. I wouldn't go so far as to say, you know, buy this and don't buy any other pan. It just look for something that has a, that's nice and thick. And it has a lid that fits good. If the lid fits good, you're gonna be able to do stuff like slow cook a pot roast and not have to continually add water to it because it's not gonna dry out. The other question I get asked a lot is, can I cook this in my crock pot? You can certainly do this in your crock pot. And you don't have to sear it first, but I would. I would just use a skillet and sear the outside of my roast and then transfer it to the crock pot and cook everything just like I did in this video, only cook it in a crock pot. Um, it might take a little longer and you can also cook it in an instant pot or um, similar type pressure cooker. And you can even sear it in those and you can cook it on slow cooker. Or if you wanna get it done in a hurry, you can turn on the pressure cooker. Um, the meat, I would probably pressure cook it. Well, usually there's a guide on it. Um, you probably got a guide in with your uh, instant pot or 
whatever kind of cooker you have and it'll tell you how long to pressure cook it per pound usually those are actually a little bit short on time you probably want to increase that time a little bit just a few minutes per pound if you're doing a pressure cooker but you can sear this in an instant pot and then pressure cook it or slow cook it right in the instant pot you know just however you want to do it and this like I said is our traditional Christmas dinner when we all get together for Christmas we have a pot roast and I've done that ever since the kids were little because you don't have to spend all day in the kitchen and I always cook mine in a pot on the stove just on low and I do it that way I guess more because it's tradition than anything else I did do it in an instant pot one year and everybody didn't like it as good. And I don't think it was because it wasn't as good. I think it was because it wasn't what they were used to. They wanna see that pot on the stove. And when you cook it on the stove, you know, you get little bubbles around the edge and then it splatters on your stove. I think they were just so used to seeing that, that that was a part of their Christmas tradition and that's what they wanted. As far as taste went, I really couldn't tell a whole lot of difference in the Instant Pot but you know when you do something the same way for 25 to no longer than that oh goodness probably 30 years and then you change it your kids tend to um freak out on you a little bit <laughs> they they want to keep it the same they want that tradition to continue but it really is not hard to cook a pot roast it does take some time it takes a little bit of patience um even getting the vegetables done um standing here and waiting for them to finish cooking i want to just get it done and you can't do that with a pot roast a pot roast is one of those things that you have to have a little bit of patience with and you have to take a little bit of time our vegetables are close enough to done that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my salt and my pepper to them um, and give that just a little while to cook in there as they're finishing up. And if you want to add any other spices to it, you know, you could add a little more garlic powder to it now. Um, or uh, you could put basil in it or, it, you know, whatever seasoning you like. That's really up to you. Um, I make it the way I like it, and you make it the way you like it. Somebody asked why I give so many variations when I'm cooking. Well, the big bonus with cooking something at home is that you can cook it exactly the way you like it to suit your taste. And if the only option you have is the way I like it, then you don't really have much of an option. Now, I think everything I cook is perfect and it's cooked exactly the way it should be, but my perfect taste is not necessarily going to be what your perfect taste is. So change it to fit your taste. They're still a little bit firm, so I'm going to give them just another minute before I make my gravy. I think my potatoes are done enough now and my carrots to go ahead and add my cornstarch and my water to my pot. Now, like I said, make sure you put your cornstarch in your cold water. You don't want to put your water in and then the cornstarch. It will make a mess and ruin your whole roast that you've been cooking all day long. And you want to give it a stir right before you add it. Now, you can see that quite a bit of my liquid has cooked out since I put my potatoes in there. So I added about another half cup of water in here. So I've got about a cup of water now, or well, three quarters of a cup of water, and my two tablespoons of cornstarch. And what I want to do is I just want to add this in here kind of slow and go all the way around the pan. And all you have to do is bring this pan back to a boil and your pot roast is going to be full of gravy. You can see that it's kind of cloudy right now where I just added it. But if you watch what's coming out from under my roast here, it's already starting to turn nice and brown. And it's going to turn nice and brown 
and you're going to be able to see through it. It should not be cloudy at all once it comes back to a boil. And that's it right there. Once it boils, you want to turn your heat off because at this point, it'll burn much easier. Now, you can turn it down on low if everybody's still not there and you've added in um, your cornstarch and your water to make your gravy and you want to keep it hot, you can turn it all the way down on low and just keep an eye on the moisture again and leave it covered and you can let it sit and simmer on low for hours after you've made your gravy. But um, you're not going to do that on this little cooktop here. It won't turn down that low. And um, if you leave it up on like medium, it'll burn really fast once you add that cornstarch in there. So after you add the cornstarch, it's ready to serve when it comes back to a boil. Or you can turn it down on low, keep it warm, keep it covered, and everybody can eat as they come in. And that's one of the reasons why we have it on Christmas now, because everybody gets here kind of staggered when we all get together and exchange gifts and let the kids open their gifts and everything. And I usually keep it on low, and I'll keep it on low for hours while we're visiting and stuff and folks will go back into the kitchen and get seconds for like two or three hours after we eat dinner. So it's it will be fine on low after you um, add your cornstarch and make your gravy. Now that is all there is to making a perfect pot roast every single time. It will be tender, your vegetables will be tender, or you know you can just do the roast and the gravy, you don't have to put the vegetables in it. But I want to show you here how easy that breaks apart. I mean, it's it's cooked super tender. It's not going to be chewy. People are not going to complain about it. And it's definitely not dry because it cooked in that juice the whole time it cooked. So if you've had trouble making pot roast before, I hope this answered all your questions. And every pot roast you make from now on is as good as your granny's was when you were a kid. It really is not hard, it just takes some time. Before we go, I want to leave you with 2 Timothy 1.7 For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of sound mind. I want to thank you so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you haven't already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.